So in this video, we're just going to introduce the properties of vector addition and scalar multiplication. In the next video after this one, we'll prove, uh, prove one of those properties. So these are going to look similar to the properties that we laid out for matrix addition and the scalar product when we multiply a scalar times a matrix. Um, the names that we see showing up here are particularly important for the math ed majors to memorize. Uh, these are things that show up when you take the NES test to get your certification. You'll be asked questions and they'll use these, these words and phrases and they'll expect you to understand what they mean and be able to respond to questions regarding them. So they're important. You've, you've got to commit them to memory. So we're letting u, v, and w be vectors in a vector space Rn, and we're letting c and d be scalars. And then the following properties hold. We know that vector addition is commutative. The order in which we add vectors doesn't matter. We have an associative property for addition, so the order we can group the vectors in any order we want. So we can do u plus v first, and then add w, or we can do v plus w first, and then add the u. Um, this one is the existence of an additive identity. Again, these are important to commit to memory. So the additive identity for an n-dimensional vector space, the additive identity will be the vector for which all n components are zero. And I like to think of this as calling it the identity because it preserves the identity of the other vector under addition. When you add the zero vector to u, it doesn't change u. U's identity is preserved. Um, here we're talking about the negative vector. That would be kind of the when you have the opposite of a vector, they say negative vector. But this is identifying the existence of an additive inverse. So if you have a vector u, then negative u, or the opposite of u, will be the vector you add to u, so that when you sum the two vectors, you get the zero vector. So similar to how additive inverse has been defined for real numbers. Um, so additive inverse uh, exists, and then we've got our distributive property, so the distributive property of scalars over a vector addition, and it looks just like you expect it to look. This is, this is the distributive property for a vector over a scalar addition. And then we have <clears throat> here, if you have uh, a scalar times a, a vector that's being scaled, you can just distribute the scale, scalar into the other, um, other scalar. And then this one is the existence of a multiplicative identity. So we're identifying that the scalar one is the scalar you multiply by a vector to preserve the identity of the vector. So notice each of four and five, we're talking about uh, properties that um, preserve the vector, right? So not four and five, three and eight right there. These are both preservative properties, right? Under addition, if we add using the zero vector, we preserve the identity of u. Under scalar multiplication, if we multiply by one, we preserve the identity of u. So in each case, we have the additive and the multiplicative identities. What are the objects in the vector space that preserve the identity of other objects under addition and under scalar multiplication?